Welcome to Fourth and One. Well, I always got it done. Bringing facts by the ton for the rise and other sun. But this ain't me in the shotgun. That's what you call it. <laughs> this is me in front of your TV having a whole lot of fun. Hey, first down, viral moment of the week. Ooh, I couldn't wait. Let's check out the clips. He does an uh, entire routine on different things. Mm. I remember being with Drew Brees and Phillip Rivers, and they talked about throwing with every Tiger Woods and LeBron so from your big toe all the way up to the top of your head. Mm. So now watch this, right? <laughs> We all seen it um, for true quarterbacks, this epidemic of philosophical views. Back in the day for the quarterbacks who, who really know, they was teaching you to follow through and then the Peyton Manning effect, right? When Peyton would throw and lift his back hip or pull his back hip through. Then all of a sudden we seen Drew Brees be the first originator of the shoulder exercise. We start seeing people do that. And then all of a sudden we start seeing Brady drag his back foot and now you see uh, how it's dragging. Now quarterbacks are doing that. Now, years past or a couple years ago, we seen uh, Dak Prescott, right? Take this, boom, ham, ham, ham. Disassociating your upper extremities, which are low extremities, to in essence create more torque. Watch how many damn goofy ass quote unquote quarterback gurus is going to be doing the golf swing, the basketball shot and all this other stuff. Thanks to the success of CJ Stroud. It always works like this, man. And uh, that's just what it is. But a lot of these dudes that call themselves quarterback gurus, they went to YouTube University and they saw this and that don't make them a quarterback guru. You got to really be in the field to doggone find out how to be the a best quarterback. You don't go to a janitor or a teacher to learn out how to be an anesthesiologist. You know what I'm saying? Like, so all these people who are saying like, I did this or I did that. Uh, man, show me your resume that backs your teaching and your preaching. Have you ever had like certain pregame routines? Of course I did. Break them down. Shit. Um... I would have a girl pull up. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, <with that verse. laughs> no, man. But yeah, um, I definitely have routines to try to, especially after I had shoulder surgery. That's really when I started taking uh, warming up to new heights because there was ways to warm your shoulder up without actually picking up a ball. And I started implementing that uh, in my latter part of my career. So Yeah. So talking about warm ups and workouts. We got a Mike Tyson. So even with that, you mm. see how large his neck. Pause. Oh yeah. Did you ever do something like that, man? Like, even though I probably did some type of manual neck exercises, pause for the cause, but nothing that extreme like that. But when you see Mike Tyson, bro, he got a swole rhinoceros neck. But if you seen somebody doing that in the gym, somebody was like, Ken, come work out with me. And they just start doing that. You joining in or that. you walking out? I ain't doing that goofy ass shit, bro. If it ain't, man, right now, I don't even really lift weights. I do bands. Because bands will make a dance. All right? Bro, I'm not about to sit there. Fake ass shit. Man, get me, get me with the cardiovascular. Let me be a little chisel. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right now, Thanksgiving around the corner, so shoot, I just need to loosen the skin a little bit, you dig, and, uh, you know, get ready for this immaculate bounce back for the spring. Next clip. Ooh, ooh. Uh, what we call that? Bit boy. Mm. He's our secret weapon. He's mm. the weapon. There was a song that... Um, Plies and Gucci Mane came out with rock star lifestyle, white boy wasted. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you tune into this clip, this is the epitome of white boy wasted. Now, who gonna be responsible for getting his ass to the car? It's like, folks, y'all, y'all get wasted, and, and y'all gotta be cognizant to the 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 burden it is to get your ass to the next destination. And that's dead weight. And we ain't got time to be picking your big ass up, man. You're going to have to lean on that cross on his shoulder, boy. Get your shoulder. Oh, Lord, Jesus. 
Lead him on the cross, Lord. Lead. Lead. Take me through the wall. <laughs> well, you got to be a little bit more considerate. And if I'm not like that on Thanksgiving, bro, you know, drinking my fine wine, my bougie wine, mm, I don't, look, don't invite me. <laughs> I'm going to be whooping so much ass in spades, they're going to have to call either defects or, it's, or I'm going to get charged for a murder case because I'm going to be killing motherfuckers. Bye! It's time for me to go downtown and do a little shopping around right by now. Oh. Uh, but what's on the boogie plate though so for Thanksgiving? I got your name, <laughs> face sad boy. I'm a vegetarian man, so I don't too much partake in no pork, so no ham, uh, uh, no chicken, so no turkey, all that. Uh, so yeah, I'm 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 a size, and my girl <laughs> and my aunties, they going my mom. They gonna whip up some right too. Oh, and I'm gonna I'm a bake a cake. You gonna bake one? A God boogie blunt cake coming out? A, a, a boogie pound cake. Okay, pound. You know what I'm saying? Boogie pound. Put it down for the pound. Boogie pound. <laughs> All right, let's get into the next clip. Oh, oh no! Good. Good. And don't he ain't getting up. I don't know, Bisping. I don't know either. He's propping himself up on the table. I'm going to let him sit down. Uh, my guy, it ain't enough neck exercises that you can do to warrant that type of impact. Oh, my goodness. My boy looked like the quarter. He looked like he was doing that. Because he brought that damn hand from L.A. and then brought that bitch to Miami. Damn. Let me tell y'all this. Partners, homeboys, uh, uh, peers, or, or, or social groups, uh, whatever the hell. If y'all with me and y'all see somebody get the best of me and slap the shit out of me like that, I don't give a damn if it's fair or not. <laughs> That's when all pistols should be drawn at that blue shirt and that doggone uh, uh, crew cut right there. Because, nah. Is that the definition of you got the shit slapped out of Bro, you? that is the definition of <laughs> damn. Damn. But look at the face when he look up. Like, he forgot where he was. Oh, fuck. Where the fuck I'm at? Yeah. Where I'm at? Who are these lost. people? Who are these people? He lost. But why would you do that, though? How would you do that? This is a... this. Oh. You're basically standing in a boxing ring. And you're asking. You're going blow for blow, toe to toe, mm. with a person to say, Hit me with your best shot. Dun, dun, dun. And they hitting you. Bam! Slap. Okay, cool. Now, my question is, was that the first slap, though? He had to make a business decision because keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep, just, just let it ride. He is <laughs> gurning back to where he is. Fuck. Damn. Mm. I done bit off too much I could chew. <laughs> Hold up. Hold on. I'm straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. But damn, we still in the first round? I don't think I could take two or three more rounds of this shit. Baby, babe, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, no, it's supposed to be so many napkins and, and white flag because because nobody who really cares about you can allow you to take that type of punishment multiple times. Bam. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know about this one. They like walk it out. Hold on, hold on, walk hold it on. out. I'm trying to. Oh, oh shit! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, no, whoa. no, 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 no. He, like, nah, he out of there. He out of there. <laughs> he doing the cha cha. He out of there. That man is in the year 2024 right now. <laughs> like real shit. He slapped his ass to infinity and beyond. <laughs> Face ass. <laughs> Next clip. <laughs> Here we go. Second down. Questionable calls of the week. Let's see what we got. Give the boy mouth. No, 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 no. <laughs> Give me that no. shit, boy. No, yeah. <laughs> okay. To bring this clip uh, to the person who is not abreast of the backstory, a couple years ago, Miles Garrett was suspended for multiple games for conduct detrimental or infractions to a person's jaw. That quarterback will remain nameless because um damage was done he used an apparatus that is usually used for protection but he used that as a weapon and that's a helmet and coincidentally it happened to be versus the pittsburgh steelers so 
y'all y'all got Google, y'all got YouTube, y'all can go back and, and, and find out for yourselves what I'm talking about. Uh, and they didn't want, no, whoa, 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 whoa. No, we didn't need Miles to kind of get trigger happy, as they would call it, because we know your resume, you feel what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. It's extremely questionable for you to have a helmet in your hand, Miles, for damage that was occurred uh, in years past. Highly questionable. Next clip. No hot water, they said? Or Shh, do you see my hair? No hot water. Uh, I think the Giants was on a away game. They were playing uh, at Washington. Yeah. And they had no hot water in their locker room. Have you been in a situation like that? I don't think he was saying it like no hot water. No, but their hot water went out. That's what he was saying. Like, they didn't have the hot water. Yeah. But that's not to say that they didn't have no hot water at all. We all been in that situation growing up in the hood. You know, we got like three minutes of pristine shower use. After that three minutes, if somebody use all the damn hot water, it's your ass. That's why everybody said, man, I want to take a shower first. No, my first on the shower, my oh, first on the yeah. shower. You know, I'll take y'all back, man. It's all right. Don't sit up here and act like y'all had blazing hot water. You know what I'm saying? Coming from him now, this young man, on the other hand, is, uh, <laughs> I don't want to judge a book by his cover, but it looks like uh, his living conditions were something different than, Mom, the water's not hot. All right, my living situation. Next clip. This is what I do. This is what you do. Well, let's take down the lights. Everybody, let's cheer on. I've got the jorts going. <laughs> the jorts. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, <laughs> all that back. It ain't even the back. All the ankle. Well, hold on. Which one is it? <laughs> Which one is it now? Oh, whoa. Hold on, Anthony. Come on now. <laughs> Tighten up, Paul Pierce. Oh, look at the step. Oh, oh. What is it, bro? Motherfucker <laughs> falling apart. I mean, unraveling. Come on, Anthony. <sighs> You're making a mockery of yourself, man. But play it one more time, bro. But and, like, uh, and get your shit together, son. Bad for it. Okay, so you. I'm talking about this is what I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> End up in a hospital. That's what you do. Swear. Look at the look at the side angle. <laughs> Oh, 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 shit. Grab the back. The oh. back first. <laughs> and then oh. the pain must have worked its way down. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, bro, look at that go. position right there, bro. That is in a compromised position. <laughs> like, ah. Uh, right there. Pause it right there. No, bro. Hell no, nah, dog. You can't do that, man. That's that hey, old head that, that say he still got it? No, nah, he don't got it. He never had it. Bro. Real talk. We got to do better, people. Don't do no silly ass shit like that. And then when you make a damn bold ass comment talking about, this is what, what I, I do. do. Man, get your dumb ass out the damn way, man. You done blew 55 bands, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Back. My back. Damn. Oh. Ankle. <laughs> I'm going down. <laughs> you need some ankle support, Bro, man. but where was he? He was trying, I feel like he was trying to get to the seat, but he said, damn it, I ain't going to make it that far. Nah, it kicked in. Hold on, go back. It kicked in. Right, this is when it, this this is when he realized like bro I can't stay down oh, here. Oh oh, oh, oh shit! Oh, oh look ooh. like Bambi. <laughs> Boom! He realized right there. Uh, I got to I got to get. I'm up. on a jumbo truck. You know what I'm saying? I'm in front of all these people, and I, and these be the people that be talking the most shit about LeBron. Exactly. Hold on. Look nah, at the hole. Look at the hole. Help oh. me. Help me. Hold on. Hold on. No, don't leave me. Oh, don't, no, leave me. No, don't leave me. No, don't leave me. No, don't leave me. No. Don't leave me. Look, that's oh. double. That's double that's, that's grip. That's the Ursa. That's the Ursa. That's, <laughs> that's the Ursa. That's the Ursa. Ursa. You feel but me? But he had like one hand for support. The second one, like, yeah, don't bro. leave me, bro. I'm out here, bro. <laughs> Help me, bro. Don't leave Please. me, bro. Please. Look at the face, though. Like the, Super ooh. questionable. Man, get your shit together, man. <laughs> I can't even keep harboring <laughs> on how much you done blew this opportunity. And now you are mean. Get your silly ass on, Anthony. Next clip, man. Imagine you're on TV one time in your whole life, 
And this is what you doing. They catch you like that. Oh, he's digging in his... <laughs> scratching his brain. I would hate to to be his uh, family member because that, that's giving one of them. He wake up with the... <coughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> them sinuses. Bro, get your shit together, bro. Look at that. Get your shit together. And then I bet, I bet, if they had they stayed on them, I bet he would have smelled his finger. He would have. He would have smelled his finger. He would have smelled it off. You know what I'm saying? He would have. Ah! Oh, my God. One of them situations. We all done been there, bro. Respect, but get your sinuses together, bro. You uh. in front of the world, dog, and boom. <laughs> Man, if you don't yeah. pop a Claritin. Or, or, or Advil or something, man. Get your dog on sinuses together, bro. You tripping, bro. Super questionable. Next clip. Get fish off. Yeah. I want you to breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Joe Goofy. What is that? That was a turkey. Yeah. That's not I a turkey. I want you to breathe yes. in and breathe out. <laughs> oh, no. Why is, why, when I was eating turkey, my turkeys ain't never looked gashed open like that. She busted open. Oh, nah, I'm good on that. I'm good on, who, who the hell you thought you was, auntie? Sir, baby, you ain't no doggone chiropractor. And even, what, what you trying to breathe in, breathe out, pop some pho? Cook it. Deep fry that fucker. Get on. You need to be infusing that with some seasoning. Mm. I do know that little bit now. It's giving Rookie in the kitchen, and uh, we need y'all to exit stage left immediately. I'm going to show up for Thanksgiving and be like, man, who the hell made that damn turkey or that pasta salad? That's, ooh, that was oh, that was uh, Cynthia. Who girl Cynthia is? <laughs> she ain't invited no, back. No more. <laughs> yeah, she could take her talents elsewhere. <laughs> Baby, you, you, you're going to be responsible for the cups next year and, and, and the paper plates and all that other stuff. Get your ass out of the kitchen with a heavy responsibility of cooking the turkey. Nah, get your silly ass on. Here we go. Third down. Uh, as we call this cam approved, or in this case, boogie approved. Who we got? It's your boy, Travi. Who gonna say something to that dude? You know, even though he, you know, the clip listens to, uh, what, that's Jack Harlow? Mm -hmm. Bruh, the biggest flex in this whole clip, it's not, the, it's not the outfit, it's not the swag of the bravado walking the tail. This is the biggest flex. Right about there, boom. That man got a text from Bay. Ah. Good luck, baby. Looking forward to after the game, that I'm gonna be able to really shake, shake, shake. Come on, come on, man. That, man. That's the biggest flex right there, cause you already know, Travis Swift. Need I say any more? I don't. Next clip. Now this is a picture with your boy Jalen Hurts. Okay, Jay. Yeah, just the, just the fit. I think he got the J's. This is. What is that, Gucci? You got the Louis luggage. I think this is the a belly sw uh, bubble coat situation with the uh, I'm I'm in year fives on the new collaboration. Oh yeah, he in his bag. He got his the bag Malcolm X hat on. Yeah, he in his big bag with that one. I like that. I like that. That's 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 clean. That's you know no goofy shit. That mm -hmm. that's purposeful dressing right there. Even though it's it's high fashion, but yet still Jalen, like that is boogie approved. Clean. He looks comfortable mm -hmm. and he's just owning it right there. It's 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 given GQ. It's given you could never. It's given I do this in my sleep. It's given I'm gonna win. It's given to catch up to my mustard to mayo. <laughs> you did. Now, now tell me Boogie just a, just a fashion note, mm -hmm. uh, question. Now, you know, he got the all matchy-matchy. Mm -hmm. Now, were you a person like that, like that's going to match it all the way out? Or tell me how, how you I mean, when it. I see this, it's, you know, a person can can easily say, like, 
He got money. He can afford that. And I agree with that. He can afford it. But sometimes, you know, you can't make a living on high fashion and expect to be deemed a fashionable person. I say that because just because you have money and you have the means to to get very expensive fabric uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you're a fashionable person. You're just a person who has the ability to buy high fashion. But for every time I would do the high fashion, the Louis Vuittons, the Hermes, the Gucci's, you got to offset it with like something with the details. I mean, look at me. You see that? Like, put together. You got to put it on. Put that shit on. Yeah, you got to do it in a way that like some sometimes folks gonna be like, "What the hell is that that he got on?" You know. But that's me. That's 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 my personal preference. But Jalen, that is something that's extremely approved. Now for me, you got to follow it up with something different. Yeah. You can't come back with, with the same. More, that same type of high fashion stilo in my book. One thing that stuck out to me was, you know, you used to do it too. Like, check the beats. His beats match his metals, but you used to always have different color, even down to the headphones. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. match with my Steve. See, come on, bro. Like, folks didn't even pay attention to that. I was, look, shout out to Beats, man, because they was providing me with product that matched my cleats, that matched my whole outfit. It was from top to bottom you know, so intentional to the to the spill that I was, you know what I'm saying, wasting. You know, a dog two chains would I always say, you, when I walk past you, baby, you're going to need a yellow wet floor sign because it's going to be drip all over the place, baby girl. You dig what I'm saying? You picking up what I'm putting down, bro? All right, now. Here we go. Next, we have fourth down, wholesome moment of the week, as we would like to call it, the one finger, one pinky, one thumb, the one love award. Let's see what we got. Nick Chubb, man, they pulled up at the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chubb. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Man, I know that's a lot from him, man. Oh, man, he's been going through so much, and... And my heart just goes out to Chubb, man. He came, I got opportunity to meet uh, Chubb and his crew. He came to fellowship not too long ago, man. And, and just his spirit was just, you know, a cool guy. You know, mm -hmm. he's giving like he's a cool teammate. So when you see clips like that, man, it's definitely wholesome just to see his whole process from being injured, going through the therapy process, and, and obviously the fans uh, giving him the, the, the support that he, that he needs and deserves. So, my one love award goes to Chubby, Nick Chubb. And we got another, another video on the line. He's been getting a lot of buzz, but this is his last time playing. Oh, yeah, 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 Columbus. Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Man, this is my favorite, favorite athlete in college, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard right there. I think... Um, as I think back of, of, of that time, I never had one of those moments where I just got to look back and had that. It's just a dope ass edit, but the body of work that that, that young man has put in, multiple thousand yard receiver, uh, receiving yards uh, at Ohio State, never been done before, just goes to show his dominance as a football player and as a receiver. So the craftsmanship of, of, of what he does on a week to week basis for many years, it's just been something that's been admirable, and, um, you know, that's wholesome in its own right. They have a big game this week, too, versus Michigan. Must-see TV. Yeah. Uh, I'll be tuned in full as a damn fat cat, you dig, and uh, that's just what you just like to see. I'll be on them, uh, what they call it, the leftovers. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They just start hitting full stride. Ooh, that, that, them, them, them collard greens done got seasoned to perfection. You know what I'm saying? They done got into the, to the refrigerator. All them flavors just done, mm -hmm. boom. Them yams, then got that cinnamon, that sugar done, done got in in the right spot, you dig? Mac and cheese, that cheese done got into them crevices. crevices. All the noodles. You dig what I'm saying? It's going to be a block by yes. the time, you know, you got to cut <laughs> it you with a it. knife. Feel like you're cutting a cake. You know what I mean? But shoot, when it melt, ooh, it's going to be like uh, cheese lasagna yeah. almost, you know? So boom, I'll be definitely tuned in to you. 
You did. And here we go. Main segment of the show. We have Newton's Law. And we have a special guest here. And not a lot of people has the voice to match the persona. And if this young man, or is this OG in the game, as we call him, when he speaks, you know exactly who it is. I present to some and introduce to others. Dan Patrick, how are we doing? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. That. I feel like I should, you know, bring my voice down a little bit lower, like uh, Barry White. Man, listen, that right there is something that cannot be taught, but not to prolong <laughs> the time. Uh, my question is this. How do you feel about the rise of black owned or like athlete owned uh, content in this space of media right now? I just like athletes taking control. Uh, mm. No matter, you know, white or black. I remember uh, when Tiger Woods, he wasn't really good at press conferences. He didn't like doing that. And I right. go, at some point, he's going to take control of his own content. And mm. then he eventually did. And more athletes should do that. Therefore, nothing's lost in translation. Mm. You're able to control exactly what you want to say. You put it out there. There's no gotcha. Um, nobody's steering you into a direction that you don't want to go. It's this is my opinion, this is my space, and I'm going to send it out. And I think that more athletes uh, should do that. And it, it really started, at least for me, with Tiger Woods. Absolutely. So for, for that being the stance from the athlete's perspective, I'm, I'm very curious, as I followed your career for so long, you know, being an adolescent and, and, and growing, growing up in the ranks of sports, seeing you on a very uh, popular platform in ESPN, now mm -hmm. you're independent. Um, how was that transition for you? Well, I needed it. I had to mm. get my ass kicked a little bit because at ESPN, I call it, you know, people talk about beer muscles. People drink mm -hmm. some beers, then they act tough. At ESPN, you have ESPN muscles where you think you're maybe better than what you really are. Right. And I'd, I think I'd gone as far as I could go. And then I had to kind of figure out what did I want to do with the rest of my career? And that's why I just, I bet on myself. That was it. And not many people leave ESPN by their own choice. Yes, sir. But I, I knew if I was going to get better, that I had to do it on my own. And uh, the first three years we did the show in my attic, all of my guys came upstairs. My wife would be there with the kids, getting them out the door to school. And they'd come up the back steps and we'd do the show there for three years. And... Yeah. So I didn't leave ESPN and all of a sudden walk into this unbelievable man cave, but I'm glad I did. I was in the attic because we built a camaraderie, a team uh, friendly show. Um, and, and I think that that's what made it work that we were around each other, trusted each other. And you know, the bottom line is we wanted to make a great show. Absolutely. I, I think really for me, a lot of people have seen my personality as such a, you know, an, an early, phase of my career and knew from the outfits, from the fashion, from the press conferences and things like that, even with on field performances that I don't think if I had the ability to be independent, to show my trueness as a, uh, a personality in front of the camera. Uh, I would always tease my agent at the time. I was like, yo, Carlos, do I do not want to be a sports analyst. And here I am, you know, and not, in that realm of sports analysts using my own platform to produce media in its own right. I'm always curious to kind of know you've been covering sports for such a long time. My next question is what's the best era in your opinion of sports? Oh, I'm fond of the eighties because I was able to cover when Larry Bird was with the Celtics and magic was okay. with the Lakers. Uh, you know, the New York Mets were great. Doc Gooden and Daryl Strawberry. Mm. Um, there, were, there were just so many events that I... Big East basketball was awesome. Yeah. You know? And to be able Big to East, be around yeah. that. Um, and I was in New York at the time, so I got to see a lot of different things. So I think hands-on wise, that was a lot of fun. But each, each decade or generation, then you have a generational player or generational right. team. So it just goes... You know, I was there to cover Jordan, all of those championships when I was at ESPN. I, I, I got to talk to him after he won those championships. Yeah. And you're part of history. And that's, really? that's why I got into the business. Like, you have to love doing that. I've been doing it for 40 years. You have to love it. 
And there are times when you go, this isn't interesting. I got to make it interesting. I don't want to go to work. Um, I get to go to work, you know, suck it up. Right. Uh, and, and, but then there are other days, most of the days where it just unfolds right in front of you. And you're like, right. this is stealing. This is fun. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. that's what you need to get. And when you said you don't want to be a, uh, you know, a football analyst or you want to be a sports personality is what Correct. you want to be Absolutely. because analysts kind of put you in, you know, a, behind a the desk. Category. And, category. Yeah. You want to so, be more so, than that. Absolutely. Even, you know, to, to, to not prolong the time, I'm curious to know what your Mount Rushmore of sports personalities look like. If you can build a juggernaut type of team. And when you say different, different eras from the eighties, nineties, seventies, the early two thousands or whatever, when you say personality, they brought the entertainment to sports. Give me your top four. So we're talking about athletes. Athletes as a whole. Okay. Personalities. Um, I would put Mike Tyson on there. Mm. Um, be- because I got to cover him. I-, I was there when, you know, he won, you know, fights. Uh, right. When he was fighting Michael Spinks. When he fought Joe, Joe Frazier's uh, son. I-, I was ringside for those things. And to watch that, to see that, man. Uh, and, and he was interesting. He was, he was somebody that I think has a lot to say. He's sensitive, but then he get in there and he, he just wanted to kill you. He, he yeah. truly wanted to kill you. And you could tell, he, he, I mean, that to me, when you start with that, Muhammad Ali was another one that everybody emulates Muhammad Ali. Like right. that dude was so bad you know, in a good way. He'd be like, I'm going to tell you to your face when I'm going to knock you out. And mm. then he would do it. But he had charisma. God, he was a good-looking guy, had charisma. And I just, you know, and later in life when he was dying, uh, I got a chance to be around him. Now, he couldn't communicate, but he did give me a pair of boxing gloves. And, uh, you know, he was just, he went from somebody who was vilified because he wouldn't fight in the war in Vietnam, came back, got his title, people still didn't like him. And then you go to the Atlanta Olympics when he's lighting the torch, and he's shaking because of Parkinson's. And everybody right. is like, they fell in love with Muhammad Ali late in his career. And he right. just had this interesting trajectory. So I'd put those two fighters up there. Right. Uh, let's see. As far as personalities in uh, basketball, uh, I would say Jordan, but he, but he didn't really act that way, the way he did in The Last Dance. I'd put Charles Barkley there. No, Barkley. okay, I, your, Auburn. Your, your Auburn boy in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Chuck. But I, I would put Chuck in there because he, from start to finish, and I think I first met him in 91, he has been the same person. And that's all I want as somebody yeah. who's interviewing somebody. I just want you to shoot me straight. Yes, I may sir. not like what you're going to tell me, yes, but sir. I want you, I, I love that you will tell me. So I would have right. Charles in there. I'd have Ali. I'd have Tyson. Let's see. Anybody else that comes to mind? Great person. At it. Um, yeah, I'd probably throw uh, Serena in there. I'd get her perspective on things. Yeah. Because wow. once again, that's different. It, where, that's where a trailblazer. How she grew up. Yes. Uh, to maintain that level of greatness, have a baby, uh, mm. you know, win a major when you're pregnant. You know, like they're just. Um, she changed the game. Martina Nervatilova changed the game uh, back in the 80s uh, with that power. And then Serena changed Martina's game with even more power. And the personality, she was polarizing. So I'd probably throw – those are – I don't know if you thought that I would mention either of those four. I did not. I did okay. not. Okay. Uh, right. But, but uh, you know, to my conclusion of this, of this segment, uh, thank you again for doing this. Uh, So many people have been asking me, Cam, when are you going back? Or even on your um, platform, how many teams have I reached out to? And my last question for you, uh, Mr. Dan Patrick, um, as a GM per se, what would you think the reason why Cam Newton is not on an NFL team? Shoot me straight, as you just said. Wait, you just went third person. 
that would make me nervous as a GM that you're going to go third person with me. Okay. Well, let me ask you this way. <laughs> How and why do you think I am not on an NFL roster right now? I think you're too big of a personality. If I'm bringing you in, I have to start you. I can't have you as a backup because everybody's going to ask constantly when the starting quarterback doesn't, he's not successful. The yes, camera's going to go to you. Uh, at, at the post game, the coach is going to be asked, when are you going to play Cam? Um, but I, I don't know how your arm is. I don't know how f- healthy you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I, you know, I thought of situational football. I did mention your name when uh, Deshaun Watson went down. If I'm the Browns, I at least reach out and just right. see, you know, gauge your interest. Uh, RG3. And they did not. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, I, but you said two years ago you heard from a team. What team did you hear from? Uh, it was small talk. It was, uh, the Panthers trying to get me back. Uh, okay. and they didn't know at that specific time, Sam Darnold was there and they were asking me to back up Sam. And I, my, my rebuttal to that was, I don't have a problem with being a backup. If I have the opportunity to prove that I'm still willing and able to be a starter. And like I said, I, I've always came from the branch of shoot me straight. And okay, they, how many they, teams do you think you could start for? Right now. Right right now? If uh, I gave you the offseason to get ready, how many teams do you think that you could be a starter for? But honestly, that part right there, Dan, has not been in the equation. Every situation that I've been in, even with New England and going back to Carolina the second time, I never had an offseason. Yeah. So I was learning on the fly. So that kind of capped my, my mental to understand the offense as a whole, to really understand the, the philosophical approach to why the offensive of coordinator is calling these certain type of plays and also to, to be around my certain talent. The off season that I did have with New England, I ended up getting, you know, kind of pushed or shunned aside by Mac Jones, right? So it was so much that, that, that happened without people understanding. Josh McDaniels is an unbelievable and a brilliant offensive mind. He never has had my skill set at the quarterback position. And then going back, Joe Brady was there, he had obviously Joe Shiesty, uh, but he didn't have my talent. And then also when I went back to Carolina, Joe Brady got fired two weeks in. So <laughs> we're scrambling. I've all I've been in messed up situations. So me coming and having you an off season though, Cam. Correct. You giving How me many an off teams season could you start for? I mean taking away the Josh Allen's uh, taking away the Patrick Mahomes, taking away the solidified guy franchise faces, I could compete with them all, right? So but that's like le- Washington, that's- Washington, yeah. the Giants, and this and 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 if, if I have another platform as far as Funky Friday, if we're keeping it funky, it, it kind of made me feel a certain type of way that even the Commanders didn't even reach out with everything me and Ron Rivera went went through too. Yeah, that's I what seeing, I wondered. I wondered about it, that. Yeah. His his quarterback situation, I know Sam. Sam came through my C1N program, 707 team, too. So I was open. I came out with a list, for Christ's sake, to say, he, these are the teams that I would do or, or, or be a backup for. And yet, still nothing. Uh, but there's more than half of the league. I would say more than 80% of the teams. When I look at a team like Atlanta, when I look at a team like um, even with C.J. Stroud, you know, not to start, but to see a guy with that skill set, does he need my help? Hell no, he's doing exceptional things right now. But to be a part of that growth process, I would have been willing to be of some type of service to those type of guys. Uh, what, are you, what are you smoking, by the way, before we say goodbye? Man, this is an LFD uh, cigar, and I wouldn't have been able to do that on, on, uh, as a sports analyst either, so. An LFD. Yes. Hmm. Okay. It's, you got the Padrones, you got the Davidoff, you got the Casa 1910s, you have the My Fathers and whatever. But the next time you're in Atlanta, make sure you give us a heads up and I'd love to host you and the, and the crew at a uh, Fellowship right. ATL, a premium cigar lounge here in Atlanta, man. And I'll, uh, that one's going to be on me. Appreciate you for I taking me that. to school yeah. and uh, <laughs> really putting me on game. <laughs> hey, Good luck with it, and yes, if I can help, 
like it, the first step is people who ask for help. And a lot of times former players think they can go into mm. TV and it looks easy and it's not, yes, no. uh, you know, if you're smart about it, you use your talents wisely, then you, you know, then that's the first start, but you got to want it. It's yes, no sir. different than wanting to be a great quarterback. You have Absolutely. to want this because there's so many people who want to do it, think they can do it. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to prove yourself. That's a fact. Hey, before we get out of here, Dan, I got, I, I got to put your stamp on or something, right? So as I end things, usually with Funky Friday, as I end things at 4th and 1, we got to do it in unison. So to your okay. camera, you got to raise your hand. One finger. One pinky. <laughs> one thumb. One love. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, Cam. And here we go. For this particular segment, we call this Cam's Picks. Now, my whole uh, record through week 11 is 17 and 13. Oh, man. Had the receivers caught the balls. Pause for the calls. Uh, the Chiefs probably would have uh, pulled it out. Uh, ooh, another pause for the calls, too. Uh, but last week I went with the Ravens over the Bengals. Uh, the Browns as four-and-a-half-point favorites over the Steelers. Uh, they won by a, uh, a field goal. Oh, God. And the Chiefs beating the Eagles as three-and-a-half-point favorites favorites as we all know that they lost uh like i said it brought my um overall record to 17 and 13 we still doing better than most and for this week i mean it's a good time it's the best time for football right around family you got good food and you could just watch so my picks that i'm going with i'm going with the lions uh over the packers and I'm going to go with the spread, and they will beat the Packers by seven and a half points. Um, then I'm also going with the Cowboys as ten and a half point favorites over the Commanders. I mean, shit, they bumping right now. And lastly, I'm going to go with the 49ers as um, underdogs going into Seattle. <whistles> All good games. But uh, I'm going to give you another one, too, who I'm thoroughly pleased about. Those Broncos are playing some good football. That's right. Broncos country. That's right. Like, bro, even though that shit corny, uh, he, he getting the last laugh. Now, nah, he done got some real, real much needed wins to, to, to really put sneakily or put the Broncos in a position to compete. Um, yeah, they, yeah they, they are. So everything that y'all been, keep that same energy now. And I'm going to keep it too. Like I was, I was needing the, 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 will the real Russell Wilson stand up. Like they, those, those guys have been able to have great team wins, not necessarily great single, single man performances, but a collective of great team complimentary football wins. And um, they're doing it better than most right now. So there you have it for this week's show of uh, fourth and one. Catch me each and every week, each and every Wednesday exclusively on my YouTube channel. Now, make sure you like, make sure you share and make sure you comment. But most of all, make sure you subscribe to be tapped in with up to date content that I'm giving you. And I'm giving you good content for the masses. I mean, who's doing what I'm doing now? As I always say, close things out. One finger, one pinky, one thumb. See you next week. One love. You dig? <laughs>